and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. In this video, I'm going to show you the best secret method for farming rare burning crusade drops. This is the fastest public method for farming mobs in burning crusade content. Now, I say public because I do have a slightly more powerful method on my Patreon, but this one is nonetheless very cool. This opportunity is located in Orkanai Crypts in Orkindoon, Outland. There's not that much reason for players to go there normally, so for the benefit of newer players, I'm just going to quickly show you how to get there. Go to your faction's portal room, port to Shatrath, then fly directly southeast until you come to Orkindoon. Orkanai Crypts is the dungeon in the north of the ruined city. You'll want your dungeon setting to be on Heroic for the following method to work, for reasons which will become apparent. Now, the first thing you should do on entering the dungeon should be to body pull all the mobs near the entrance. Now, some of the mobs have an ability to possess you and mind control you for a minute. Let this happen. Once you have been mind controlled for some reason, it never happens again until you reset the instance. If you try and break the mind control, the mobs will just cast it again. Let it happen and go and make a sandwich. I'd recommend grapes, feta cheese and marmite. Once that's done, again pull a number of mobs. Now you'll notice that when you do so, a number of ads spawn. Each ad has the prefix unliving. Unliving sorcerer, unliving soldier, unliving stalker. These are very interesting in that, although they are ads, they have a proper loot table. Now, run into a corner. The reason we do this is we need everything to be in front of us. You'll need to use a macro, which is simply slash tar u. What this macro does is ensure you only ever target unliving mobs. The other mobs you never target because they are the goose that lays the golden egg. They summon the unliving mobs, but if they themselves die, no more unliving mobs can be summoned. Now, especially when you are doing this for the first few times, carefully and purposefully use the macro and make sure an unliving mob is actually targeted before using a base attack, such as the Cobra shot I'm using here. Speed comes with practice. Be aware that there can be a second or so of latency due to positioning issues when you're targeting the mobs and it's very easy to target the wrong mob. I've pulled a pack of about 20 mobs here. You might want to experiment with smaller sizes to see what works best for you. Now when you use the macro and it targets a dead mob, that means you've killed all the unliving ads. Now you want to drop combat. I strongly recommend you use a hunter for this farm if you can. You can use other classes, but the hunter's feigned death makes dropping combat and resetting the mobs really simple. If you are not using a hunter, then you will want to gather all the mobs in the first chamber and use the instance portal to reset the pack when you've killed all the unliving mobs. This way is a bit slower because you have the additional loading screen time, but it is still quite effective. Obviously, you can use this method in tandem with abilities such as Rogue Vanish and Night Elf Shadow Meld to drop combat to minimize your overall downtime. Bear in mind, it is probably going to take you less than an evening to level up a hunter to level 100, which is all you need for this farm, and indeed many others. If you want to know how to level fast, I suggest you check out my leveling guide. It took me well over a year to complete and has literally dozens of tricks you won't find elsewhere. There's a link to that in the description below. Now, most of the time you'll be doing this farm, you'll be getting small amounts of gold, trash items, nether weave cloth and the occasional green. This farm is absolutely not for anyone who wants consistent gold. So why are we doing this? The reason is that Heroic Burning Crusade Dungeons can drop some of the most valuable items in the game. Here are some of the drops that the unliving mobs have been confirmed to drop. In fact, they can also drop items like 
Blade of Wizardry, which have extremely low drop chances and are very valuable. So if you want a shot at them, it pays to use a method like this where you are maximising the number of mobs you kill per hour. The beauty of this method is that you will never hit instance lockout. Yet the kill rate is comparable with running dungeons or raids, and there's no endless tramping down corridors. I should at this point explain exactly how to approach this farm. Some of you just love going after rare weapons and items for the pleasure of owning and displaying them, in which case you know what to do, just go for it. For those of you who are trying to supplement your gold with some risky but profitable farming, here's how you should do it. First, do all your production profession cooldowns and other primary lucrative gold farming and gold making in current content. You need to do this first to offset the considerable risk involved with legacy farms. But once you have secured a decent amount of regular gold, then you want to start increasing your average gold per hour with a farm like this. Note that the long run can be very long when farming rare drops. You can station an alt outside Orkindoon, ready for when you hit instance lockout doing something else. You can run 10 instances of anything, but can still enter Orkanite Crypts as it is a unique instance, so it won't count against the 10. Bear in mind you also want to stop doing this if you are getting a sizable number of lucrative drops. Imagine you got insanely lucky and two Blades of Wizardry dropped. A Blade of Wizardry is worth around 140,000 gold on average across EU realms. But the second blade will be worth much less than 140,000 gold because the supply of Blades of Wizardry has increased, reducing its average price. This is a supply and demand issue. You'll also want to check what's being posted on the auction house for the same reason. Bear in mind this can be an incredibly frustrating farm. This is definitely not something you want to do if you're looking for safe and consistent returns. It is almost a pure RNG farm. I can only think of Alderman as an example of something that's more extreme in that regard. If you are looking for a guaranteed amount of gold per hour, I'd recommend looking through my channel archive of raw gold videos. I've developed a lot of methods to skip through dungeons and raids quickly. Methods that you won't generally find elsewhere. Now, inevitably, when I publish a method like this, someone will ask, will I get banned for using this method? In this case, almost certainly not. I have published similar methods in the past, and what happens is that no one ever gets banned for using them, though the opportunities do get nerfed, usually towards the end of the patch cycle. But as far as you and your account goes, as a general rule, Blizzard don't really care about anything that happens in legacy content. What's up everybody, and welcome back to another Forgotten Farm Friday. I'd just like to quickly mention a channel that is proving incredibly useful to me, that goes by the name of Seathrift. You'll want to subscribe to Seathrift because she constantly researches weird and useful items from rare mobs or vendors around Azeroth. I'm constantly amazed at all the stuff she finds I never knew about. She's really good at finding things that fly under the radar. For example, her latest video shows you how to get a recipe that sells for up to 9,000 gold from a low-level quest. There's a link to Seathrift's channel in the description box below. So that's pretty much it. If you liked it, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching, this has been Archvelder. I really would like to know who is buying my insulated wiring for thousands of gold at a time. I got it for 8 copper a piece.